as she started to develop as a producer, she started to develop this vision of what she wants her show to look like. Yeah. And it's not stupid to be like, you know what, when I'm playing main stage at Lost Lands, this is what I want my, my stage to look like. And we're working yeah. on that now because yeah. it will only make your journey as a producer better. Mm, and yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You're listening to The Real You. Thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary in all of us. My name is Dooley, and this podcast is in partnership with Pocket Change, the social platform built to show the real you. We talk about hers all the time. Like, she has this vision of, she makes a lot of, like, really beautiful, ethereal, wubby sounds. And, like, yeah. she is inspired by Asian culture. And so mm-hmm. a lot of hers is the dojo. And it's, like, the dojo experience, what it's like to go to the dojo. And, yeah. in like, immersed in this beautiful Asian scenery and all these different cultural things that mean a lot to her, but also inspire her music. And so yeah, 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 yeah. we've tied a lot of that into her visual pack and her, her visual experience, because that's what her music is about. And it, I can't even tell you going to see someone like I've done lots, like probably 50 over 50 or 60 shows in the past six months. And like yeah. watching a VJ play whatever they want mm-hmm. versus a VJ playing content that they're given. Mm-hmm is a completely different experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is why I like I always offer to do my friends stuff like mm-hmm. because I want my friends to show up and like yeah. get the chance that they're given mm-hmm. to use it as best as they can. And like like I yeah. said I don't care if you're the first slot or the last slot. Like yeah. no, show I, up. I I think about that too with not just the visual side but the every set or chance you have to be either performing or in front of people or like like that in itself is a massive privilege that you almost yes. forget about. Um, like I think about years ago when I was first getting, sorry, I, I didn't even start on Ableton. I started on machine. It's the, the beat pad. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was, I was making like looped hip hop beats pretty like almost a completely different style now, but there's all these kind of overlaps. You, if you visit some of my old stuff, but, um, but with that, it's like, I still, I can't forget the moments then being like, Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine what it'd be like one day to like play this on a big system. And yeah, let alone a big system, it's a massive show. It's just a set of speakers in front of people. Like even within going in, um, okay, there's one. So I've had a couple shows, but the one of which I was like the smallest <laughs> thing. Um, it was it was a place in, in Denver here, but essentially I was playing it like I might have been at 1 a.m. on a Thursday at kind of um uh it was basically like a hookah bar-esque place yeah. um and so at this point and then, so it's 1, 1 a.m on a thursday a lot of my friends were just like not coming and then it's like i don't have that big of a pull behind like all these other kind of without this big like putting a big promo behind it and having a venue and this legitimizing of it it's, it's hard to kind of rally some people you know and so it's 1 a.m on a thursday and I was kind of assuming, like, I don't even know if people are going to be here, all this stuff. But I still remember the feeling like that day for whatever it was, like six hours before the show. And I had to get there kind of eight o'clock to make sure it all sounded yeah. right and everything. So basically all day, like getting my set together, doing stuff, still testing different transitions and all these things. Essentially put like a ton of hours into getting this like really great set together. And by the time the night starts to happen, it's going, so people come, it's fun, and people are having, whatever, it's just a great time. And then people kind of start to leave around, you know, it starts to hit 12 o'clock, people start to leave, someone's playing. And by the time I'm up there, it's like, there's maybe six people there, maybe yeah. like, and there's some people in the other room or whatever. And each of the six people were kind of, because I was talking to them throughout and they wanted to like see me for a sec and then go. So, yeah. but the point of the story is going into how much time and energy went and still knowing that it was like three, four people who are actually going to sit there and kind of listen to it is like, that's three or four people that also you're still bringing them into your world. You're still yeah. have the chance to show they're still showed up for this thing. They're still have their valuable time and energy in this place with you, like having respect for all that. And also knowing that like the process of even doing that, my like, instead of just lazily being like, ah, no one's going to be there. I'll just click play on some tracks. Like still trying to curate my whole thing was, um, it's almost like, that's actually the part I love doing. Cause then when I come to the next set, it's, it's that much easier and that much more. Yeah. Oh, I remember when I messed with around with it for that tiny one, but at the same time, 
I like, got new ideas from that, new songs that work together. And then I thought about my originals and how they could have sounded better in certain ways for my next um, songs I, I'm finishing up. So, yeah, and no, I think it's just the respect of even the honor of like being able to share what you're creating, whether that's visually or musically or just even appreciating others um, in the meantime. Well, I tell this to every one of my friends, every single one of them. Um, I have a, I have a friend named Taryn. She's been producing music for a yeah. while now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, actually, she hit me up. Uh, <laughs> not like the same day I released my first song. And she's like, yo, do you know Dooley? And I was like, actually, we literally just started talking like over fucking Instagram. She it was her. She shared your post to her Instagram story saying like so proud or something like that. Yeah. And was releasing a song. And so too, same thing. It's like Taryn, I think Taryn's unbelievable producer is like where I follow her stuff. She's also then great taste in music. And so she's sharing yeah. like her friend of putting some music out and stuff. Like I love the discovery of new people's music and especially yeah. whatever. So that's actually the reason why I clicked into your post. And then when I had clicked into your post, I, I don't remember exactly what you had written up was I remember I was talking about not getting confined into a certain genre and yeah I don't know if it's like being nervous about putting out your first song under that kind of premise of you know you want to explore so many different it was yeah here. and so literally as I was reading it I'm like this is me like it looked like I wrote the post like under your picture it looked like I wrote the post if wow. that makes sense like because yeah. that's just like, I have feel the exact same way of listen I like so many different genres I'm going to constantly evolve but at the same time I'm kind of going to try some random shit. Then I'm going to have some, what, besides the point that you putting yourself out there in that sort of way. And like the random, you know, friend kind of sharing that because it was your own true energy that she was like, Oh, this is so great. Like sure. Then that's what got you being open and vulnerable in that way is what made me feel like, Oh, I just got to like, first off, check out the song. And then I hit you up being like, yo, I totally agree. Like, keep rocking it. Like, that was my just initial gut thing of literally. I write weird, like weird long Instagram captions about my like personal thoughts, and so yeah. When when I like read you, kind of like having that same thought process and stuff, I'm like, fuck yeah, like keep doing it. Like, it's awesome. I want to touch on that as well, but I want to say this as well. Um, so Taryn, one of my biggest motivators. She's the greatest friend ever. Yeah. Um, she has been trying to get out of this like box of local dj you know and i think a lot of people get sucked into that mm -hmm. um and oftentimes she will play like an opening set in the lounge at the black box or an opening mm -hmm. set here an opening set there and we talk about it and she's like well i have this all original set this like 40 track original set but there's only like you know not a lot of people are showing up for me there's only like two or three people there mm -hmm. and um it doesn't matter how many people are there it matters that you play the best that you can every single time because you never know who one of those three people might be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, yeah. And I see this actually all the time at the black box. Closey's girlfriend works as a bartender at the black box. Mm. I see Closey there all the time. So yeah. what if one of those times that you have an all original set and there's three people in the crowd, one of those three people is Closey and she loves your fucking set. Yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. know, it's like, mm play your heart out no matter if there's one person or a million people every yeah. single time you play play like you fucking own it yeah yeah, um, yeah. You... now going back to what we were just talking about that was definitely like i remember when i first started making music um i was terrified to put stuff out because i was like if i put this kind of song out now everyone's gonna expect me to put out this type of music every time mm -hmm. i put out music yeah and i do not write like that at all Sometimes I'll write a deep 140 track. Sometimes I'll write a fucking hip hop track. Sometimes I'll write a fucking melodic dubstep track. Like, mm -hmm. seriously, like I was showing you the other night, I have yeah. like so many different fucking things that I make. And it's yeah, really yeah. just about, it's really just because like when I sit down, I don't really ever sit down with this like intent to create yeah, a specific yeah. thing. It's just like, I have this energy. I need to get it out. What yeah. is it going to be? You yeah, know, yeah. like, and whatever it is, is what it is. And yeah. um, I want that to be what I hold myself to the rest of my production career. It's like, you know what? I released this like 140 check once. Next time it's going to be house. You never know what's going to come from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But that's why people 
hopefully will stick around. It's because variety. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't listen to one type of music every day. Yeah, I listen yeah, to a different yeah. type of music every every other day, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't it's cool that there's somebody else like that's like it's like that. Like my, hey my cat my caption or bio or whatever there was and like you know your little SoundCloud cool yeah. track side for the longest time for years was just all caps I don't have a lane. And so yeah. it was yes. <laughs> It was really that. And I talked to with my buddy who's kind of helping on like some management stuff or just, you know, someone who bounced through. Like, he's like, he's like, I know you're like, don't have a lane, but you kind of have to, you know, start to, and I'm like, yeah, but no, yeah. <laughs> like, I know what you mean, but that's also where I've started to, to conceptualize more of um, even just the more like project mentality where um, each side, each Thing. So say, for example, I actually have um, like this rap album coming out and actually it's next week. Literally. So, but it's a full like past four years of hip hop and rap productions that I've done and had people over recording all this stuff. But instead of like kind of just putting them all out, I've kind of like, I don't know how to release these. They're kind of going to be confusing. I've been making a lot of bass and stuff. But then as I kind of get a project together, I'm like, oh, this is it like clicked with me. Like I never have to be confined to a thing, but as of now creating a lot more music and more efficiently and starting to, you know, make sure all the releases are kind of hitting that top notch level. It's like, I have this other little EP that's, um, out of this whole, I won't get into this, but basically, um, a whole thing in Peru and kind of had this whole spiritual journey experience. And so I have kind of these two songs sort of inspired by that. And those are kind of more like beautiful, sort of slow. They still kind of bassy, but in a much more, kind of like chill way i don't know and then i've also kind of got these couple songs that are this coliseum bass type shit where she's like yeah. sounds and kind of big guitars for my buddy playing so each of the tracks has my buddy playing this classic rock-esque guitar over crazy bass line stuff with coliseum choirs and horns and it. so it's like i have each of these things going and i keep being like do i just release them what do i do but now i'm kind of flowing into oh here's this little project and then i'm taking another turn here and here and then some singles along the way, just cause sometimes it's a, I literally have a song. <laughs> I have a song that's just made out of like sync noises. It's such like uh-huh. bubble <laughs> drop noises. And I'm like, okay, this isn't meant for an EP or album or project. This isn't like some concept I'm working on. Like I was just seeing what would happen if I started a song with a sample with like 20 sample drop, like bloop, 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 bloop. so yeah. then I sounds like, Oh, what if the drop was like a, you know, when you turn on the button for a sync to like, oh, yeah like so like what if that was incorporated in the drop and, and so yeah there's uh, i've got a song called drip drip it's not quite ready yet but, <laughs> <laughs> but, i want to hear this yeah, yeah yeah so we're working on it but it's, it's definitely a goofy one so that's where um but that's what excites me about music is like when you're saying like what you're like even though you love all these things you're really passionate to in the vj realm and like doing that and still exploring all these others it's I found that too with just production and yeah. being such a nerd in that space is also, well, I grew up listening to classic rock and then I was all hip hop for so long. And then I discovered electronic and then that left into much more of the basic experimental stuff that I'm working on now. But along that path was also multiple subgenres of each of those. Like, yeah. And I have all these different friends. I have some people who are rappers and people who are guitarists and people who, the only day the fun part is just getting in the studio messing with stuff creating yeah. like why I put that in a box or try and do something instead of just like let it unfold and as it unfolds maybe you're not ready to release it yet or you're not quite sure what to do with it like, that's fine but in the creative process just to let it unfold I think is one of the most powerful things you can do so I yeah, agree. That, that's for like like the whole I don't have a lane like I'm gonna have to bring that back but <laughs> you should make that an EP yeah, yeah, where it's literally just, it's all my, it's all like drip, drip, and then like. Yeah, like, it's all your drip, random drip. shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's funny. There's actually a bunch of, uh, their initial, this rap project was actually going to start as that. I had like 20 something songs on it. I was like, these are just going to be shit. all. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. That's a lot. But, but that's where the, the concept of it was like, so it's still called Out the Cage, but it's kind of like, it's all the stuff that I felt wasn't quite ready to release. It's almost some demos or some things. Um, and I'm just going to put on one big project. But I guess the project's not going to like do well, but you'll just get a flavor for so many different things I've worked on and touched yeah. on. Then I started to kind of go back in on some tracks and I started to really have some like great, what I feel now are like great sounding and stuff that kind of flow in the storyline of different kind of energies. 
and that's where it is now where it's more of a 12 track thing yeah but i still kind of have these other but so now my longer term concept is expect down the road in a few years just i'm dropping like a 30 song project where it's just <laughs> it's just like it's almost like you can just call it like b-sides or whatever it's just all the stuff that didn't quite make it out but at the same time like why can't i just put this out like what's yeah. who cares like there's so many um i was actually looking around for samples yesterday um and there's this one that like pretty lights had used and it just came on my shuffle which is where i got into the rabbit hole of it um but it was actually that it was a project released. I forget. It was like OV something. Um, and it was kind of like an unfinished tape of this old, more like sixties type of music. And the whole tape itself was kind of like unfinished B side type of things. And it was like, some of the tracks are cool and some are just unbelievably amazing. And then they like, don't they like finish after two minutes when the song's not over. So I'm like, who cares? That was just like, I enjoyed that. That was totally the vibe I was looking for on my car ride home yesterday. Like, yeah. Why does it have to be some, even to call something perfect is like pathetic kind of in a way. So I don't know. That's where we'll get to that 30 song project on the road, but I'm going to let, I'm going to let the vault kind of expand before we get, <laughs> get, get too, too much in that realm. <laughs> well, I feel like that's also a really good way, like putting songs out there that may not be finished, but okay. Also like sometimes, like I have several projects that are like 80% finished but if I go back and work on it, I know I'm going to fuck it up. Yeah. So yeah. I just don't touch it, you know, but it's beautiful yeah. how it is. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I think actually we talked about this last time. My friend Mark Mport, who you were saying you were a fan of. Yeah. Um, he actually, so about, he's been producing for like seven years now. Yeah. Man is a genius. Mm-hmm. Um, but something that he did to get himself out of this box of feeling like you have to finish music Mm. is on his SoundCloud, he just created a folder where he will like make a song in a day and just put it in the folder. And it's public. Anybody can hear it. Anybody can go Mm. listen to it. Mm. But it's like, I needed to get that energy out. I don't really have room for this in my day-to-day time, but it's still good and it deserves to be heard. He just puts it out there and puts it on his SoundCloud. And like, I love that idea. I think it's so cool because one, all of it is completely different than his normal bass stuff. Like there's one song on there. It's like, I think it's so cool. It's a like a down tempo lo-fi beat. He mm-hmm. went down to the train tracks in Denver and recorded mm-hmm. a bunch of trains like like honking and going by. And yeah. he made this beautiful down tempo beat of train horns. It's literally nothing but train horns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, it's beautiful. And he's like, I don't have anywhere for this in my like discography, but yeah. it still is beautiful and it should be heard. And like yeah. I love that idea. So like yeah. kind of what you're saying, like having this giant you know, accumulation of tracks that may not fit anywhere, but mm. still deserve to be heard and listened to because people out there probably would love it anyway. 